Napoleon was one of the most brilliant military strategists in history. He was a man of extraordinary drive and ambition, whose rise to power was meteoric. In 1799, he led a coup d'etat and was appointed first consul. Within a few years, he crowned himself Emperor of France. Then, in just over 10 years, he conquered most of Europe, fighting almost every European power, reshaping the political landscape forever. But how did Napoleon manage to accomplish so much in a relatively short period of time? Hi, I'm Bibi, and today we're diving deep into the incredible energy and relentless work ethic of Napoleon, exploring seven of his workaholic habits and giving you an exclusive look at his daily routine in the second half of this video. So stay tuned. Napoleon once said, I have never found the limit of my capacity for work. And he wasn't kidding. His daily routine consisted of, as he himself said, 16 hours of work, which included everything from military strategies to public works. I work all the time, he once said, at dinner in the theater. I wake up at night in order to resume my work. Napoleon resumed even when he was on the move. His carriages served as mobile offices, fully equipped with desks, maps and reports. No doubt he would have relished the convenience of our modern day mobile devices. Imagine Napoleon with a mobile phone. As Napoleon states himself, his work didn't stop when the sun went down. During his campaign in Italy, he wrote in a letter. I return fatigued to my quarters, and it is necessary to sit up working all night. He would often wake up in the middle of the night to get some work done. His discontinuous sleep did not prevent him from carrying on his work. One of Napoleon's standout qualities was his remarkable ability to focus his attention. Pierre-Louis Roderer, a key player in Napoleon's rise to power, once remarked that he could work for 18 straight hours without showing any sign of exhaustion. Well, that's even more than Napoleon claimed himself. Napoleon's approach to work was unique. He could seamlessly shift between various subjects in a single session, treating his mind like a meticulously organized cabinet opening and closing drawers as needed. He explained his ability to maintain focus with the following analogy. When I want to interrupt one piece of work, I close the drawer in which it is and I open another. The two pieces of business never get mixed up together and never trouble or tire me. Do I wish to sleep? I simply close all the drawers and then I am asleep. This unparalleled ability to maintain a strong focus and systematically work through various aspects of his responsibilities contributed significantly to his incredible productivity. His attention to detail was second to none, allowing him to manage every aspect of his vast empire. Napoleon had an insatiable curiosity and an eye for detail. He regularly quizzed his staff on a range of topics to ensure he was always well informed. This attention to detail combined with his vast network of spies and informants meant that he was always one step ahead. Napoleon's memory was legendary. He could recall intricate details about battles, reports, and even people he had met just once. This incredible memory served as a powerful tool in his governance. It was an indispensable tool that allowed him to govern his empire with unparalleled precision. Despite his relentless work ethic, Napoleon did understand the importance of taking time off. During these periods, Napoleon would sometimes spend whole days without actively working, even though he remained in his palace. He would visit the empress or doze off on the sofa for a few minutes. During these moments, he would engage in conversations on a variety of topics, often reflecting on his own idiosyncrasies, his physical constitution or new plans. Napoleon loved music. He would say that music tells us that the human race is greater than we realize. His preferred music was Italian vocal music, especially when it was sang by beautiful women. 
According to composer Giovanni Paisello, music had another benefit for Napoleon. The emperor likes my music because it did not prevent his thinking of other things. However, Napoleon's moments of inactivity were not solely due to leisure. They provided him with the opportunity to think deeply and strategize. It was during these quieter moments that he would formulate grand ideas, preparing himself for the next phase of his relentless work. As mentioned earlier, Napoleon was a passionate reader. He had a personal librarian, he always traveled with books, and he took a great interest in constructing the ultimate portable library to accompany him on his military campaigns. Napoleon would have probably loved our digital book world. Imagine Napoleon reading a digital book or listening to a story. Napoleon's taste in books was primarily classical. His favorite authors included Plutarch, Homer, and Ossian. Of course, Napoleon didn't achieve greatness on his own. He had the full resources of the French state at his disposal, and he wasn't afraid to demand the best from his subordinates. This combination of self-drive and the ability to inspire others was the perfect recipe for success. All said now about Napoleon's habits, let's have a look how these habits were built into Napoleon's daily routine. Napoleon would wake up at 7 a.m., have tea or orange blossom fusion, and read the post by the fire, as he was very sensitive to the cold. After his tea and post, he would take his bath and get dressed. This would take nearly two hours, as, unlike many of his contemporaries, Napoleon took his personal hygiene, quite similar actually to Mozart, which I cover in another video, very seriously. When on a military campaign, he made sure that he always had with him his little box containing all the necessary hygienic items. Napoleon would then meet his brothers, aides, and foreign representatives. Between 11 a.m. and noon, he would take lunch, sit at a small table in the company of his secretary and one or two others. Sometimes he would lunch with his wife. Lunch was always quick, sometimes barely lasting 15 minutes. Napoleon preferred simple food such as roast chicken, pasta, and wine mixed with water. He would end his lunch with a cup of coffee. After lunch, Napoleon would shut himself away in his office with his secretaries and work until the evening. He devoted a lot of attention to writing letters. He wrote to ministers, generals, ambassadors, foreign ministers, and monarchs. Last of all, Napoleon wrote continuously to his family, particularly as they were all scattered all over Europe. Napoleon wrote over 36,000 letters, probably even more. He dictated his letters, often simultaneously, to a number of secretaries. These letters were usually on a number of different subjects, so his secretaries had to be very patient. I guess it wasn't very easy being Napoleon's secretary. During the afternoon, Napoleon would receive his ministers to discuss state budget and the organization of the Grand Armée. He would also often visit ongoing project sites such as the Louvre Museum and other building works that went on in Paris. His 6 p.m. dinner, often postponed due to work, was followed by more work or occasionally leisure activities such as reading or going to the theater. At his country retreats, he enjoyed the company of his family and friends. And there you have it, a glimpse into the remarkable work habits and daily routine of Napoleon Bonaparte. His relentless dedication, tireless work ethic and exceptional focus allowed him to achieve remarkable feats in his lifetime. Whether you admire his work habits or not, there's no denying that Napoleon's approach to work was nothing short of extraordinary. What do you think? In your opinion, what was Napoleon's strongest habit? Thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, bye bye.